Don't forget to leave a number 1 through 6400 in the comment section below for your chance to win both of these beautiful pieces of Surfite. You must be a subscriber in order to win. And if you're outside of the United States, you're going to have to pay for shipping, but I would gladly send it your way if you win. The number will be chosen at random, Sunday, August 16th, 2020. And I'll let the winner know that they've won the following day on the 17th. You'll have two days to claim your prize or another winner will be drawn at random. Thank you so much for watching everybody and thank you so much for subscribing. It really means a lot to me. Howdy there folks, this is Lapidary Dave and I got a package and we're gonna check it out together. Yeah, it's from Mia Mia Mining and Manufacturing. And you know what it is? Just dump this out. <laughs> it's surfite. It's like resin from surfboards. Very, very crazy. <laughs> if you folks uh, haven't checked out my most recent video that I posted right before this, I show off a little bit of this material and I chat a little bit about it. I show off some of the rough and yeah, this stuff is awesome. So in that last video was one of my lost videos from the Tucson Gym and Mineral Show. I chat a bit on how sometimes Fordite, even though it might be the real like paint that Ford uses, isn't always the paint from the Ford factory which kind of kills the vibe for me. And I was wondering if they did the same thing with this surfite material, which is some kind of resin that's, uh, at least traditionally, it's a resin which is like a byproduct from the manufacturing of surfboards. I asked the gentleman who sold this material to me and he did say that it's from a custom surfboard shop in California. This material was 30, two dollars i think 32.50 or something after shipping two pounds of it for 32 bucks that's a crazy deal a little tough to see i love that pinkish orange there lots of layers in some spots it is translucent and you can see straight through to the other side this piece looks like the first piece with the turquoise color and that lime green this piece has a little slice that's very translucent. Anyway, you can find these cabs online and quite often the cabs cost a lot more money than the raw material does. I have seen that there's two ways that people go about cutting this material, just like Fordite. You can cut it like with the grain and get the cool lines or you can cut it against the grain and you get some cool psychedelic pooling. And in this video, we're going to cut one of each, and we're going to give them both away. I want to thank all of you for subscribing. I've got nearly 400 subscribers in like a week. Super, super awesome of you folks. I really appreciate it. And it's time for a giveaway. So I bought this material from a gentleman named Kevin. On a group on Facebook, I saw that he was selling this material, and I had to get some. I sent the gentleman a private message and he told me how much it was. Very, very affordable. I think he said it was like $14 before shipping a pound. I've met this gentleman actually at the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show at the Miners Co-op venue. And I think a lot of people know him for the, the saw lubricant that he sells. Mia Mia Mining and Manufacturing Distinctions of Nature and Stellar Lubricants. Here's the information. Do not be afraid to hit this gentleman up yourself, Kevin Kessler, and ask him for some of this material yourself. I would love to see other people cutting it. You don't see too much online. And uh, yeah, if you would, tell him Lapidary Dave sent you. That would be a big, big pleasure. Or at least you saw the video. All right, I'm gonna cut two pieces. One with the grain and one against the grain. Okay, so I'm checking out this material. 
And I'm looking at the banding to figure out which pieces I should cut. And I'm seeing that, like, the banding is a lot thicker than Fortite, which has layers that are very thin. And so I would probably have to dome this quite a bit against the grain to get some cool pulling. But I'm seeing this piece has a bunch of colors that are layered a lot closer together. So this will be the piece that we cut against the grain. I hope we keep some of those pinks. And let's cut, oh, let's cut this piece with the grain. I like the reds. It looks like it's translucent in quite a few spots. I bet you this material would, you know, work really well with like a backing, like maybe DevCon or maybe even something colorful. I have a bunch of these pieces of glass that are like for stained glass art stuff. And these would probably look super cool, like to make like a doublet of this material. So whatever is translucent, you see to the back of it. Uh, I might do that in a different episode. Yeah, just a little food for thought. Because some spots are translucent and they might not be as appetizing to see straight through it than if it was full of color. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and hit up the Highland Park 6-inch saw. Alright, we got our goggles on, we got our safety squints on. Ready to slice this stuff. Here's the first piece. It actually slices very nicely, very stable. I wasn't expecting that. It's such a hard like resin. I was expecting it to kind of maybe shatter a little bit, at least blow out on the ends. Almost no blowout at all. So I definitely imagine that this is going to cab up very nicely. Like I said before, it's translucent. And it would probably look pretty cool as like the base for like a doublet. Put something colorful behind it so that pops on through. Huh. All right, so now let's do the piece we're gonna cut against the grain. All right, so I made two cuts, one to get a slightly more maneuverable piece, and then I cut the side that's gonna be the back. Ah, this side is so cool. I'm gonna flat lap both pieces just a little bit on the sides that I think are gonna be the backs. I think I'm gonna trim that up right there. And after that, I'm gonna get cabbing. It's a little irregular, but well, that's totally fine. It's gonna look awesome, I know it. All right, folks, we're here at the good old Simple Elegance Easy Cab. Uh, let's start off with the piece that we're gonna cut against the grain. I'm gonna try to even out the side just a little bit more. I guess we'll take it all the way to 3000, but when we get to polishing, I'm gonna use um, aluminum oxide. I've been using uh, cerium oxide, a lot lately 
for harder stones like jaspers, quartz, and agates. But this stuff, since it's like a plastic, I think the aluminum oxide will be the best for polishing it. All right, folks, so I'm a little surprised. I was expecting it since it was like a resin to be kind of gummy, and it's not. It's very, very stable. I'm a little disappointed on this piece that I'm probably gonna lose a lot of that pink. And since there's a lot of green right here, it's a little tough for me to tell visually where my girdle is at and where my dome is at. So I'm having to rely a little bit more on feeling this particular piece. Anyway. That's my 80 grit. I'm going to hop on over to 220 now and uh, take it to 600 grit before we look at it again. All right, this is 600 grit dry. Unfortunately, I lost a lot of the pooling color. That's all right. I think it still looks great. But if you look closely, hopefully I can get it to focus. You see those little lines? This material is relatively soft compared to like gemstones, even though it's pretty tough. So you can see scratches very easily at 600 grit where on some stones those scratches can become almost invisible and it does facet pretty easily um, even on grits like 600 grit so hopefully we get rid of a lot of that stuff on 1200 grit and i know we'll get rid of a bunch of it by 3000 <laughs> looks pretty awesome Anyway, I'm going to take this to 3,000 grit now. folks so this is 3000 grit as you can see some spots are kind of like breaking away and you can see 3000 grit scratches it might be very hard to see through the camera but I can definitely tell so what I'm gonna do is take this to one more wheel before I take it to 14,000 grit though, I'm going to take this over to the jewelry polisher and polish it to see if a lot of those scratches become invisible after the final polishing. I expect the scratches to kind of just shine up and that this is really going to need a 14,000 grit wheel, if not like a 50,000 and a 100,000 grit wheel. I'm not too sure what I could do about this little mark besides going back and polishing it again, but I don't know how far that goes, so I'm just going to let it ride. All right, so I'm happy that I polished this before I took it to 14,000 grit. All the little scratches from 3000 have become invisible, so it kind of works a little bit like amber. I can take amber to about 1200 grit and I can still see the scratches. But once I final polish it, all the scratches become invisible instead of just polishing the scratches. Definitely a learning experience. So the surface is not perfect. There is a little bit of like pitting and undercutting going on here. And I suspect because it's like 
at the edge of where different colors meet. That's just from the layering of this material. But I think it looks awesome. Love the green, love the blue. And we kept a little bit of the pink. So definitely a learning experience. Anyway, I do suspect that the other piece that I'm gonna cut with the grain isn't gonna have these like undercutting problems from where it was like layered because it's layered side by side. Learn something new every day. And so now that we know that we can get rid of those scratches that were visible at 3000 grit with our final polishing, our buffing, I'm only gonna take the second piece to 3000 grit. All right, here's our second piece. And this is 80 grit. All right, so here is 80 grit, roughly dry. That's our shape. Pretty translucent in spots. But yeah, I think this um, vertical layering is a lot easier to cut just from the feel of it than the against the grain pieces. I'm really liking this rough little shield shape. Anyway, now I'm going to take it to 220 and then 280 and then we'll take another look at it together. Folks, this is 280 grit on the soft wheel. Definitely much easier to cut um, with the layers going vertically. A lot of fun. Cool shape. Every once in a while, even though I'm not going to polish the back, I do deburr the back because it feels a little sharp. And though I haven't hurt myself, I can totally see moving too fast and slicing my fingers on the back of this stuff where the edges were being sharpened from the lapidary machine. So I just get in there and deburr the back corner every once in a while. All right, so now I'm gonna take this to 3000 grit before we hop on over and polish it up with some Fabuluster. That is 3000 grit dry. You can see I was a little bit more careful to keep all of the scratches going in one direction. Something I've noticed about this material, when I cut it where the layers are up and down, I can kind of see, even when two layers are the same color, where the different layers are. It's a little tough to tell on camera, but right here on this clear spot, you can see a white line going up and down even though the next layer is clear. So I wonder if like every color is a different surfboard and they just use so much of that resin and stuff that it kind of just piles up into large layers to where, you... yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you tell me if you know more about this stuff than I do because I would love to know. Love this little spot right here. This one turned out great. So now I'm gonna go buff it. One more thing worth mentioning. If I ever let this material touch a side of the wheel that wasn't getting a lot of water, it would actually kind of burn up the resin. I don't know if it's melting or if it's like burning up from the inside or something, but I had to go back and get some of those spots that were burning up. There's some materials like some common opals that I cut 
that I've burnt up like that in the past. Ah, very cool. A lot of fun. Let's buff it. And here is the final piece. Looks absolutely awesome. I showed it to my grandmother and she wanted to confiscate it. I had to remind her it was for a giveaway. <laughs> What's cool is like if you can, if you look from the side, you can see the cool color play that you can't really see as well straight up and down. One of the things I love about this is you can see all this like dirt and like little specks and stuff in the clear spots from like the manufacturing of the surfboards. I think it looks awesome. Very cool stuff. Took a great polish. Um, just for giggles, I polished the back straight from like 200 and what 80 on my flat lap or something like that and it left a decent polish it did polish this saw mark here but this stuff is odd i think there's a much better way to go about working this material than the way i did it in this video and time will tell maybe even using like some kind of compound or whatever that the surfboard people use or people in the plastic industries use Anywho, these two are going to go to a great home. This green is so cool. So make sure to leave a number 1 through 6,400. And I want to thank you folks again for all of the subscribers. Everybody who subscribed in the early days and everybody who subscribed today and everything in between. It's really a blessing and a pleasure. Again, if anyone is interested in buying any of this material, it is very affordable through this gentleman, Kevin Kessler. And here's his information. I definitely will put it down in like the description section below. I saw this material being sold for like hundreds of dollars a pound. It is still like a niche material. So you got to be careful when buying this material. Some people want to take advantage of how like new it is, which is, I guess that's how everything is in the world, right? Anyway, thanks again, folks. This was a blast cutting this material. I plan on making some matching pairs to make earrings. I already have a few people who want me to make earrings out of this material. It's so light, it would make great earrings. And I'll probably make a few pop sockets of this material. I would color the back some way or another so that you can't see like the socket or whatnot. I love you folks. Thanks for everything. I really owe you guys. Until next time, I love you. See you soon.